Sometimes you want to try out new things on your computer, but at the same time, you want to be careful not to break your day-to-day -day environment. So that way, whatever you might install and try out is not going to affect your main working environment. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a self-taught developer and I create videos with the goal of making them be resources for new developers. Some videos are technical and some others are just me sharing insights that I've gathered throughout my journey as a developer. This video will focus specifically on showing you how to install VirtualBox and creating a segregating working environment so you don't affect your day-to-day computer or working environment. Let's get to it. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is download VirtualBox and you can simply download it from the Oracle website. If you just go to virtualbox.org, you should be able to find a download there. And this application runs on Windows, on Mac OS and on Linux. We are interested in the Windows um, platform. So let's go ahead and download that version. We don't want it. I don't want to store it on my desktop. So I'm going to select my downloads folder. Uh, let's go ahead and save it there. Okay, it's done downloading. Okay, let's go ahead and install it. I usually don't change any of the default settings. I'll just go ahead and install with the defaults. I also don't change any of these settings. So just click next. Uh, this is telling you that uh, VirtualBox will need to install a virtual network adapter. So I'll just go ahead and approve that and install. It's going to ask me if I'm allowing changes. I will click OK. After it's installed, I will go ahead and start the application. Once the installation finishes, it will look something like this. So what we want to go ahead and do is create a new virtual machine. So let's go ahead and click on new. Um, this is asking where the virtual box or VMs will be installed. Um, let's go ahead and change this directory. Uh, let's go ahead and select other. Um, Let's go to my C drive and on the C drive, let's create a new folder and let's call it um, VMs for virtual machines. And let's create a name for this. Uh, since this will be a Windows based installation, um, I'll go ahead and call it uh, Win Machine. Uh, okay, so that's a correct directory. I will be installing Windows on it. It will now be Windows 7. Let's, I will be installing Windows 10, 64-bit. Um, the ISO image that I have for Windows 10 is a little bit outdated, so I will go ahead and select Windows 10. But if you have downloaded a, a newer version of the ISO for the Windows 10 installation, uh, you can go ahead and select the version that um, best fits your needs. But for this, I will select just regular Windows 10, 64-bit. Uh, here is where it's asking you to um, allocate the amount of memory that you want to use from your system. Uh, in this system, I currently have 32 gigs installed. so. I will go ahead and allocate only four gigs, which is uh, 4096 if I'm doing the math correctly. I will just leave it on the default VDI format. I want to dynamically allocate the size. So for example, if once you install Windows, uh, you could have it be a fixed size. So for example, you can say 100 gigabytes. And from day one, before you even install anything on that virtual drive, that drive will take 100 gigs of your storage. But if you select dynamically, this will grow 
as you install more and more things on the virtual machine. So I usually like to use the dynamically allocated option so I don't take the whole fixed size right from the get-go. And here it's asking me what is the maximum size that I want to use. I will go ahead and give it 100 gigs. Uh, but obviously, if you have limited storage, you can go uh, lower than that. Okay, so now the machine is uh, powered off. It is created and you can see that we now have four gigs of RAM. Uh, for some reason, it has allocated a floppy drive, an optical drive, which is a CD or DVD drive and a hard disk. I'm now going to go copy the ISO image that I have for Windows and place it in the VMs directory that we created while we were installing VirtualBox and I will use that as an installation image for Windows 10. Also, if you don't if you don't have a Windows installation ISO image, um, you can um, you can download one online and I could show you where you can find one. Um, I'll probably paste a link on the description of the video. Okay, once you have downloaded the the Windows 10 um, the Windows 10 image, um, you can set that as your bootable drive and let's find out how we can do that. Once you have downloaded the image uh, for the Windows 10 installation, we will set that ISO file as a boot drive for this virtual machine. And you'll do that by going to settings, going to storage, and you can add a new optical drive. Go ahead and add one and you will navigate to, in this case, I have named it Windows 10 and this is the 32 bit or 64 bit installation. So I'll go ahead and select that. Um, I'll go ahead and choose that drive. Uh, there is a, an optical drive that's empty there. I'll go, I'll go ahead and delete that one. I'll click OK. So now if I've done everything correctly, if I go ahead and power up this machine, you're going to automatically boot to that uh, installation image. I will go ahead and select 64 bit. Uh, this is a, a quick notice. Um, once you use the mouse, it's telling you that if you want to exit the capture mode for VirtualBox, you have to um, use the right control key to exit. So I'm just going to tell it not to show this, Im this image again. As you can see, the menu for Windows installation timed out and it defaulted to the 64 bit version, which is in this case what we needed. So we'll just go ahead and continue the installation here. I will go ahead and click on next and I will tell it to install now. If you don't enter an installation key, you'll still be able to use it for a few days, but it is recommended that you go ahead and buy a key and enter it at this stage. But for now, just for the purposes of this video, you can go ahead and click skip and the installation will continue. Of course, we accept the terms. I uh, hear um, if you installed Windows before on any machine, um, this is the place where you usually use uh, custom. And as you can see here, we have 100 gigs. I will just go ahead and select that. This is the space that we allocated while we were setting up the VM. I'll go ahead and click next. And for the sake of expediting this video, I will go ahead and fast forward through the installation process. Once the installation is finished, we do not want to boot from the installation image anymore and we want to let the Windows setup process continue from the files it has already installed. At this point, it seems the setup already completed, so I will go ahead and skip this for now. And I will select Express Settings. Getting critical updates. And now it's restarting. 
Okay, so now it's asking if you own your computer and I will say, yes, I own it. And I will go ahead and skip this step. Now it's asking who is going to be using this computer. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's the deaf life. And I'll put a very secure password. And click next. And if you've installed Windows before at this point, Windows is creating your uh, user account and setting everything up. Uh, just to make a note, um, a lot of this, um, during a lot of these periods where, where you see this spinner, I just went ahead and fast forward it. I wouldn't want you to wait while things are happening. So I would just went ahead and fast forward in a lot of the places. So. Okay, so now it's asking me if I want to allow my network or my computer to be discoverable in my my local network. So I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. Okay, so what we have now, we have a fully operational virtual machine with a bit of an outdated Windows installation, but is going to go through the uh, Windows update process like any other computer so uh, but I just want to show you that now you have your own C drive which is completely separate from the C drive on my machine on my main machine so that way you don't have to worry about messing anything up so everything that is related to this virtual machine is in this file here uh, virtual machine and you can see that it's uh, up to eight gigs now. Uh, the cool thing about it is that now you can go ahead and install anything here. Uh, once every all the drivers are installed, I, I'm going to be able to resize the, the size of the window. Right now it's, um, it's fixed to that smaller size. But once you install all the drivers and you let the, the virtual machine install all the updates that it needs to um, install, you should be able to resize and maybe even maximize it for it to take the take up the whole screen. Um, so that pretty much sums it up. Um, I just wanted to create a space where you feel comfortable installing and uninstalling things and somewhat of a disposable environment for you to feel comfortable and make changes, sort of break things if you need to, try things out, and at the same time not affect your main work environment for those of you who only have one computer a laptop or a desktop um, if you do it this way you won't be you won't have to worry about messing anything up and have your work be interrupted by you installing and trying new things out so you can go ahead and just turn this machine off i could literally just close the window and it's going to ask me if i want to shut the computer down or the vm um, or save the save the machine state. I'll just go ahead and tell it to send this shutdown signal to the VM, and it will automatically shut down. You have a separate environment now that you could reuse, or you know bring up whenever you want to try something out that you won't necessarily that you don't necessarily want to install in your main system. So I think that's a really good thing to have, and I think it's going to be useful for the upcoming videos that we'll be recording. I want to reiterate that this is the first installment of a video series where I'm going to teach you how to create a web API from zero to installing your database, designing your database, pretty much everything that you need to know to create a web API using the .NET platform, .NET Core to be specific. If you found this video useful, Please subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified whenever we publish new videos. Thank you.